Welcome to the 2024 Medicare Education Webinar by University Hospitals Medicare Advantage Plan by PTHP. The goals of this meeting is to provide you with an overall explanation of Medicare. You're going to understand the two ways to enhance Medicare with option one, Medicare supplement plans or Medigap plans, or through option two, which are Medicare Advantage plans, also known as Part C plans. Some important de definitions before we get started. Um, Social Security is a federal program that provides benefits for those that are survivors, retired, and disab disabled. Um, Medicare is a federally funded health insurance based on age or disability. And then Medicaid is state and federally funded health insurance based on income. And an important takeaway is that Medicare and Medicaid are not the same. Sometimes they're used interchangeably, but just remember Medicare is a federally funded health insurance based on your age and disability. And then Medicaid is state and federal um, health insurance based upon your income. So how would you enroll into Medicare? Um, if you are already receiving benefits from Social Security or through the Railroad Retirement Board prior to the age of 65, you will be automatically enrolled into Medicare A and B on the first date of your birthday, unless your birthday is the first of the month. So for example, if your birthday is July 20th, then your Medicare will begin on July 1st. If your birthday is July 1st, then your Medicare would begin on June 1st. Now, if you're not receiving benefits from Social Security and you want Medicare to begin the month that you turn 65, you must enroll by contacting Social Security and um, usually want to do that two to three months prior to turning the age of 65. Now, you can also enroll into Medicare under the age of 65 after being awarded disability under Social Security after 24 months. There are some exceptions to that, such as ALS or ESRD. You'd want to contact um, Social Security depending on your circumstances. Now, if you or your spouse are still working and you turn 65 and you're covered under either yours or your spouse's active employee um, employer health coverage, then you may be able to delay your Part B of Medicare without any penalty until you retire. Now, Medicare would pay primary or secondary uh, to your group coverage depending on how many employees are in your company. Now, if you've elected to delay your Part B, it is important to apply for it, again, about two to three months before you retire. This would prevent any breaks in the medical coverage and avoid a Part B penalty. And you and your employer um, would need to fill out a form um, and hand it in when you went, go to apply. And that form is CMS L-564. It's found at CMS.gov, and some employers have that form on hand. And once you have that filled out, you'd want to take that to your local Social Security Administration office. And this will, uh, this will provide proof to Social Security that you had insurance um, since the age of 65, that you had credible insurance since the age of 65. Now, also something to keep in mind is if you do have a health savings account or an HSA through your employer group coverage, you'd want to stop contributing to your HSA at least six months before you apply for Medicare A and or B and Social Security benefits. You'd want to talk to your Human Resources Department, your tax advisor, or the Social Security office um, for more details regarding those circumstances. So what if you were offered COBRA? So COBRA is a federal law that was passed in 1985 and provides continuing group health care coverage for some employees and families after a job loss or other qualifying event. Now, COBRA and Medicare, um, Medicare does not consider COBRA to be consider, uh, credible coverage. So to avoid a penalty, you'd want to sign up for Medicare as soon as you're eligible, even if you're offered COBRA. So you'd want to really um, review your circumstances and um, timing if and when you would be offered COBRA because a big takeaway is that COBRA is not considered credible coverage by Medicare. So if you were to sign up for COBRA and instead of Medicare and then you'd go sign up for Medicare later, you'd be assessed that penalty. 
So I talked a lot about penalties. So what are some of these penalties um, and how to avoid them? So avoiding the penalties, you just want to make sure that you sign up for Medicare when you're first eligible in order to avoid that Part B penalty, as well as you'd want to sign up for prescription drug coverage when you first become eligible to avoid a Part D penalty. Now, if you worked past the age of 65 and are ready to retire, you would want to sign up for Medicare Parts A, B, and D to avoid all those late penalties. So a big takeaway from this is whether you're aging on to Medicare or you're still working and you uh, worked past the age of 65, when you are beginning to retire um, or you're going to be losing your group health care coverage or you're aging on to Medicare, you would just really want to make sure to sign up for Medicare Parts A, B, and D to avoid any um, late enrollment penalties. So there are four parts of um, Medicare, essentially. Two parts are original Medicare, and then two parts are um, later, later add-ons or enhancements to original Medicare. So an original part of Medicare is Medicare Parts A and B. Part A is also known as, known as hospitalization. And Part A covers things such as hospital stays, skilled nursing, hospice, and home health care. And you, get, um, you obtain Part A through Social Security. Part B is also part of original Medicare. And this is also known as your medical insurance. This covers things like doctor visits, outpatient services, um, ambulances, lab work, x-rays, um, things like that. And that too is obtained through Social Security. Now, Part C are also known as Medicare Advantage plans. And what they do is they include um, Parts A and B and sometimes D, your drug coverage, all into one. So they take over for Medicare, um, but it's all in a one-stop shop. And Part C plans are governed by Medicare, but you can only obtain Part C plans through private insurance companies. Then Part D is prescription drug coverage. Again, with Part D, they follow Medicare guidelines, uh, the Part D plans. However, you can only obtain Part D plans through private insurance companies. Now, with either option, with any option, Part C or Part D, you would still have to pay your Part B premium. So regardless, you still have to pay that Part B premium. Now, let's review some premiums for Medicare. Now, Medicare is insurance, um, so there would be premiums. So for 2024, for Part A, if you worked 40 quarters or 10 years, then you would have a $0 monthly premium. If you worked for 30 to 39 quarters, then your Part A premium would be $278 a month. If you worked less than 30 quarters, then you would have a $505 Part A premium. Now, everyone has to pay Part B premium. So the standard Part B premium in 2024 is 174.70. Now, premiums are based on your income, so if you had a higher income, then your um, Part B premium would be higher. And this chart illustrates that. So, there's a two-year look-back period for Part B premiums. So, for 2024, they're going to look back at your um, annual income in 2022. If you filed either individual or on your as a joint on your tax return, that will indicate what your monthly Part B premium is. So for illustration and for talking purposes, we're going to focus on that individual tax return column, and I'm going to be reading left to right. So filing individually, if you made $103,000 or less, then your, your Part B premium will be $174.70. If you made above 103,000 up to $129,000 in 2022, then your 2024 monthly premiums will be $244.60. If you made above 129,000 up to $161,000, then your Part B premiums in 2024 will be $349.40. 
if you made above 161,000 up to 193,000, then your Part B premium would be $454.20. If you made above 193,000 but less than $500,000, then that Part B premium for you in 2024 would be $559. If you made $500,000 or above, then your Part B premium in 2024 would be $594. And I'll leave this up here just for a few seconds, just so you can review it. Okay. Now, as you can see, the same logic will apply if you had a higher income on your, for your um, Part D monthly premiums. Again, the look back period is two years. So for premiums in 2024, your look back period is your income in 2022. And again, for talking purposes, we're going to uh, focus on that individual tax return. And again, reading left from right, if you made $103,000 or less, then there wouldn't be any additional Part D premium in 2024. If you made above $103,000 up to $129,000, then you would have pay an additional $12.90 in addition to the plan premium. If you made above $129,000 up to $161,000, then you would pay an additional $33.30 um, in addition to the plan premium for Part D in 2024. If you made above $161,000 up to $193,000, then you would pay an additional $53.80. If you made above $193,000 but less than $500,000, then you'd pay an additional $74.20. If you made $500,000 or above, then you're going to pay an additional $81 in addition to that plan premium. And again, I'll leave this up here just for a few seconds so you can review it. Okay. Now that we've talked for the premiums about um, original Medicare, let's talk about some of the out-of-pocket costs. And we're going to start with um, Part A first. Again, because a Medicare is insurance, you're going to have deductibles and co-pays. So in 2024, Part A deductible for um, inpatient hospital stays for the first 60 days is $1,632. That's your Part A deductible for the 50, first 60 days of an inpatient hospital stay. Then uh, for days 61 through 90, you would have a $408 copay per day. And if you um, were in the hospital days 91 through 150, you would have an $816 copay per day. For skilled nursing facilities, now keep in mind skilled nursing facilities are short term stays, not long term care. If you were in the hospital um, over 100 days, as you can see, there's no coverage. That's because it's considered long term nursing care and that would revert to self pay or Medicaid. However, for days 1 through 20, there's a $0 copay. For days 21 through 100, it's a $204 copay per day. And then, like I had stated, days over 100 days would not be covered. And then home health care and hospice are all covered at 100%. Some original um, Medicare Part B out-of-pocket costs and some examples of Part B services are doctor office visits, lab services, emergency room, urgent care, chemo, radiation, diagnostic testing, durable medical supplies, outpatient surgery, outpatient rehab, and emergency ambulance services. For 2024, there's a deductible for Part B of $240. After that deductible is met, Medicare is going to pay 80% for the remainder of the year and you pay 20%. Now, something to keep in mind with original Medicare is there's no out-of-pocket maximum for Part A and B. So, if you were getting chemo radiation, um, after that deductible is met, you're going to pay 20% for the remainder of the year. There's no cap on that on traditional Medicare. Now, Medicare also covers um, preventative benefits at 100% with no deductible or co-pays. And some preventative benefits are your mammograms, um, lung cancer screenings, glaucoma tests, flu shots, hepatitis B shots, COVID-19, 
um, again, your yearly wellness visits, those are covered at 100% with no deductible or copay, as long as that's, there's no diagnosis code on those. So now that we've talked about original Medicare, let's talk about some enhancement options. So the first enhancement option is that you would have original Medicare. Then you could get a supplement or Medigap policy. And rounding out your health care needs, you would have a Part D plan. And then we'll discuss Part C plans or Medicare Advantage plans. Just something to keep in mind is that you're going to pay your Part B premium no matter the enhancement option you choose. So the first enhancement um, with Medicare supplement plans, these plans are identified by letters A through N. Um, they pay secondary to Medicare. So you would have your original Medicare and then you would have a supplement plan. And depending on which of the plans that you choose, some of all of your costs that are not covered by original Medicare would be covered. So for example, Plan G, um, Plan G, once you meet that $240 Part B 2024 deductible, then everything else is going to be covered um, at 100%. So you would have a $240 deductible to meet on Plan G, and then after that, everything's 100%. Now, with Medicare supplement plans, there's no network to stay in unless you have a, a supplement plan that has a network. But most of the time, as anywhere that is contracted with Medicare would accept your um, Medigap or supplement plan. Your premiums are going to be based on your age and health and where you live. And they're not available in Ohio for anyone under the age of 65. And something to keep in mind is that with Medicare um, supplement plans, you can enroll in any month. However, you would have to answer questions, if, medical questions, if you do not have a guaranteed issue or if you're not enrolling during your guaranteed issue period, which is the first six months after you turn 65. And what's guaranteed issue? So guaranteed issue is that time period where Medicare supplement policies are offered to any eligible applicant without um, asking medical questions or in regard to health status. So that's usually the best time to buy a Medigap policy is when you first are turning 65 with both Parts A and B, or if you delayed Part B within six months of your um, Part B effective date. So you'd want to buy during this time because insurers cannot deny you coverage based on health issues, um, past or future. And then insurance also can't increase your prices during your health issues. And then if you don't buy a Medicap gap plan during this time, you may not be able to get coverage during due to health issues and or you may pay a higher premium due to those health issues. So you'd want to really kind of review your options when you're when you're looking. This chart illustrates some of the plans that are offered. Um, as you can see, there are um, plans A through N. And that plan G that I had um, discussed, you can see that everything's going to be covered except for that Part B deductible. But then once that Part B deductible is met, then we're going to start paying at 100%. And I'll just leave this up here for a few seconds so you can review it. Okay. Now, we reviewed we're still on the first option. So the first option is to enhance your original Medicare is to have original Medicare parts A and part B, and then to get a supplement policy. And to round out your healthcare needs on this option, you can get a standalone part D plan or prescription drug plan. So you can have a standalone drug plan if you just wanna have original Medicare and or if you wanna have um, original Medicare, a supplement policy and a part D. And then we will review those Part C plans. Standalone Part D prescription drug plans are also known as PDPs. Now you have to actively enroll into a standalone drug plan. You're not automatically enrolled when you enroll into Medicare A and B, so you have to actively choose a plan. 
all Part D plans must cover at least two drugs per the classification of Medicare, uh, according to Medicare guidelines. Now, if you have coverage through an employer retiree drug plan or the Veterans Administration, then you may not need to have a Part D plan because what you have uh, will meet your drug needs. Now, there are quite a few drug carriers, uh, Part D standalone drug carriers. The plans do vary. They do all have to follow Medicare guidelines regarding medications. However, those formularies and where those drugs fall on their formularies can be different, as can be the pharmacy network, premiums, and deductibles. So it's good to do a little research when it comes to uh, Part D drug plans. Now this illustrates the 2024 Part D standard benefit coverage. So there's an annual deductible, you'd pay the first $545, and then you'd be in the initial coverage stage. During this stage, you're gonna pay your copay, the plan is gonna pay their, um, the rest of it until you reach a total out of pocket of, me of medication costs of $5,030. Once you reach that, then Medicare says that you are in the coverage gap or donut hole stage. During this stage, your, um, you would pay 25% of the cost of your medications. You're gonna continue to pay 25% of the cost of those medications until you reach a true out-of-pocket, according to Medicare, of $8,000. Once you've reached $8,000 in Medicare, um, in medication out-of-pocket costs, then you're in the catastrophic stage, which then your co-pays will change to zero dollars. Now, you may not be taking a prescription now and you may be wondering why Part D is so important. Eventually, most people will need a prescription drug at some point in their life. Um, Medicare prescription drug coverages will protect you from some of those out of pocket, out of um, those high out of pocket drug costs. And enrolling when you first become eligible means that you will pay the plan premium and if you enroll later, you may have to pay a penalty. Part D penalty, Medicare calculates the penalty by multiplying 1% of the national base average premium of a standalone Part D drug plan times the number of full uncovered months that you did not have Part D or credible coverage. And in 2024, that national base average premium for a standalone drug plan is $34.70. So each month in 2024 without Part D coverage is a penalty of 35 cents per month. This penalty begins at the time of enrollment and it is a lifetime penalty. You can avoid paying that penalty if you have credible drug coverage through the VA, if you have extra help or low income subsidy, or you sign up when you first become eligible and you do not go any longer than 63 days without credible drug coverage. That Part D, low income subsidy or extra help, this is a program through uh, Social Security that offers extra assistance to help with the Part D premium, Part D deductible, co-payments and co-insurances. It can also help you through the coverage gap or donut hole. You can qualify if you're single or married with limited resources, and you can apply through socialsecurity.gov. You can visit your local Social Security office, or you can call Social Security at 1-800-772-1213. Now we had reviewed um, option one, which was your original Medicare and then a supplement policy and adding a prescription drug benefit. Now we're gonna review all your option, your second option, which is Medicare Advantage plans are Part C plans. So Medicare Advantage plans are Part C plans. They combine your hospitalization, which is your Part A, your outpatient medical services, which is Part B, B, and sometimes those drug benefits, which is your Part D. Now, these insurance companies are approved and subsidized by Medicare to manage your health and drug benefits. Premiums can usually start at $0 a month, and you would pay um, cost shares. So you'd pay 
uh, co-pays or percentages as you use the plan benefits. Now, Medicare Advantage plans may also add extra benefits, um, such as dental, vision, gym memberships, and over-the-counter benefits as well. There are some requirements to join Medicare Advantage plans. So you must be enrolled in Medicare A and B, and you would continue to pay that Part B premium. And you also have to live in the service area of the plan that you choose. And Medicare does contract with um, private insurance companies to manage your Part C benefits. There are two types of Medicare Advantage plans. There's an HMO, which just stands for Health Maintenance Organization. You must use um, the network of providers and doctors in order to utilize medical services, except in an urgent or emergent situations. And then there's also the Preferred Provider Organization, or PPO. This offers two levels of benefits, either in-network or out-of-network benefits. So in reviewing your two options, you could either have option one, which is your original Medicare, parts A and part B, your supplement policy, and a standalone drug plan. Or you can choose to have option two, which is a Medicare Advantage plan or Part C plan, which combines your Part A, your Part B, and sometimes your Part D all into one. But just remember that with either enhancement option, you would still pay that Part B premium. Now there's also some um, enrollment periods that we want you to become aware of. So the first is your initial election period, which is three months before the month of and three months after your 65th birthday. There's the annual enrollment period, which runs from October 15th to December 7th for a January 1st effective date. And then there's the Medicare Advantage open enrollment period, which offers um, in those individuals that have a Medicare Advantage plan to change um, their plan or to change their Medicare Advantage plan company from January 1st to March 31st. And then, of course, you have some special election periods, such as if you're losing employer coverage, if you're moving in and out of the plans area, or if you qualify for Medicaid or extra help. Some important contact information that we'd like you to be aware of. Uh, you can always call Medicare at 1-800-MEDICARE or www.medicare.gov. You can contact Social Security at 1-800-772-1213 or socialsecurity.gov. You can always contact the Ohio Department of Insurance, or ODI, at 1-800-686-1526, or www.insurance.ohio.gov. You can also um, find some helpful information on the Ohio Senior Health Insurance Information Program, and that's 1-800-686-1578. And again, that website is www.insurance.ohio.gov. When it comes to questions about Medicare education, we are always happy to assist you with any questions that you may have. Please feel free to call the University Hospitals Medicare Advantage by PTHP and ask to speak with a sales representative. Our phone number is 216-535-4014 or 1-833-954-0400. Our call center is open Monday through Friday from 8 a.m. to 8 p.m. And from October 1st through March 31st, the call center is open seven days a week from 8 a.m. to 8 p.m.